Hey guys, this is Rachel with cypresstextiles.net and today I'm going to show you how I make the motif for my geometric lace blanket. Um, all the hexagon motifs are the same except for the half hexagon and so this is how you make the full hexagon motif. So I'm going to go ahead and start with a slip knot. And I'm using Shapegus River Washed yarn, and this is a sport weight yarn, and I'm using a size 4.25 millimeter hook. Um, you may use a different uh, hook size for this yarn, but this is just the one that I prefer. So I'm gonna chain three, and then slip stitch in the third chain from the hook to make a ring. You can feel free to start with a magic knot, a magic ring, or you can start with five chains, four chains, um, whatever you find the easiest. I'm just gonna go straight into the chain three ring and make a single crochet. All right, then I'm gonna chain one. Now go ahead and make a regular double crochet. These two elements together, the beginning DC and the DC, that right there is gonna count as one 2DC cluster. Now you're gonna chain two, and this is part of our repeat. Chain two and make your 2DC cluster. So you're gonna yarn over, Insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over and go through two loops. And now that's your first part of your 2DC cluster. Yarn over, go into the ring, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through two loops. So now you've got three loops on your hook. And you're just going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. And that is your 2DC cluster. So you can see how this is a pretty good stand-in for a 2DC cluster, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and work our repeat. Chain two, 2DC cluster. All right, and you're gonna work your repeat all the way until you have six 2DC clusters, including this first one. Okay, so now I have six 2DC clusters and all my repeats are done, but I'm gonna chain two. That way I can chain my last two and then join. So I'm going to tighten my tail at this point. I'm gonna cinch my tail since I've been working over my tail the whole time. My center is now closed. All right, so using this tail, I'm gonna bring it up and pinch it to my work because I'm about to work over it to bring it up to the next round. Okay, so I've got my two chains on the hook and I'm gonna treat this like a cluster. So when I uh, go ahead and join my round into this cluster, I'm gonna go behind Normally you would go into these two loops of a double crochet to join, but since I'm treating this like a cluster, this is how I join my round for clusters. I'm gonna go through these two loops right here. So my tail is pinched there. You can see it's coming up to the top when I make my slip stitch, all right? So now that looks a lot like a cluster and my slip stitch join is just laying across uh, flush with the other loops there. Okay, so I've got my tail trapped. You can see my tail is trapped, so it's going to the next round, which is good because you don't want any tails to weave when you're finished with this extremely colorful blanket, um, which means you're gonna have a lot of tails to weave in if you don't weave them in as you go. So for this next round, I'm gonna make a slip stitch into this first chain. So I'm gonna go straight into the chain and make a slip stitch. Okay, don't tighten up that, that slip stitch because it's gotta lay flush over your chain. All right, now we're ready because we're at the center of our chain here. And I'm gonna make a beginning DC, which is like I said before, just a single crochet, don't chain up, single crochet working over your tail and chain one. All right, now we've got our beginning DC. All right, single crochet, chain one, and you're trapped your tail. And now we're gonna chain one more for the corner. All right, now working over your tail still, I'm gonna work two double crochet in the same chain space. Okay, two DC. All right, and now I'm gonna trap my tail. Normally I would bring my tail up in or over, but since these um, chain spaces are so close together, I'm just gonna trap my tail at the back. I'm gonna pinch it to the back and keep working over it as I do this next chain space corner. All right, so I'm gonna make two DC, chain one, two DC for this corner as well. Two DC, 
chain one and two DC. All right, and that is my repeat for this round. So I'm working over my tail still, as you can see, it's getting buried there. And I'm gonna keep working over my tail until it's all used up in my corners. And for the next one, two, three, four corners, I'm gonna work two DC, chain one, two DC. All right, so here I am with all of my corners finished except for the very first corner where I only did a beginning DC and then a chain one for the corner and two DC. So I've still got to finish up this first corner. All right, so I'm gonna make a double crochet straight in that first chain space. Okay, and now I'm ready to join my round. So what I do is I'm gonna insert my hook not only into this back loop right here, but into both of these loops, the back loop and this leading loop where your other chain is coming out of. So I'm gonna go through both of those but when I make my slip stitch, okay? And now you've got your one chain hanging out for the corner there and you're good to go for your join. Okay, so don't tighten up this um, slip stitch here because it's supposed to lay flush over your beginning DC, so it acts like this V right here. That's what you want. Okay, and I'll explain, like I always do, the anatomy of your beginning DC. I'll pull out my hook so I can show you. So this, the single crochet is supposed to mimic this bottom part of the beginning DC, and the first chain that you make, you've got your, you've got your single crochet and your chain, it's supposed to look like this part of the DC. And then when you join your round, the slip stitch that goes over it looks like the top part of the DC. All right, and so now I'm gonna work into the chain space when I work my next round. Okay, you're never gonna work into the stitch that you joined into because then it won't look like the other stitches anymore. And your goal is to have your first stitch look just like the rest of them. All right, even though you have to do some fancy footwork on that stitch. Okay, so we're gonna work straight into this chain space with a beginning DC. So we're gonna make single crochet, chain one, and then chain one for the corner. All right, and then you're gonna make one double crochet into the chain space, not two like before, it's just one this time. Okay, so now what we'll do is work, you have your these four double crochet right here, two from this corner and two from that corner before your next chain space corner. You're gonna make double crochet in all four of those stitches. All right, so now you're up to your corner. And in your chain space corner, you're just gonna work one DC, chain one, one DC. All right, DC, chain one, DC. Okay, and now you're back to your repeat again. You're gonna work four double crochet across these four stitches and then one DC, chain one, one DC. All the way up until we're at the beginning. Okay, I'm back at the beginning now. I've got my final four double crochet there. And this time we don't have to work any extra stitches into the corner because this corner is complete. It's just got one beginning DC, a chain one for the corner, and then one DC. So that corner is complete. All we have left to do now is join. So I'm gonna go straight into that chain like before, grabbing both of those loops there, and then making my slip stitch. Okay, we're gonna start our next round with the same way with a beginning DC. Okay, single crochet, chain one, without chaining up and a chain one for the corner. Make one double crochet into that same chain space. Now we've got six double crochet here instead of four. So all the way up to the next chain space, you're gonna make double crochet in all six of these stitches. And then you're gonna do double crochet, chain one, double crochet in your corner, all the way around. All right, so I'll see you guys at the beginning. Okay, so round four is complete here. And um, again, I'm ready to go ahead and join. I don't need to make any extra stitches in that first corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and join my round and then I'll back up and show you how it looks. All right, get your hook in there, make your slip stitch and you're joined. So this is how your motif looks so far. And in the geometric lace blanket, um, I join on the fifth round. So you can make your hexagons any size you want, but I join on the final round and it's a single crochet round. And I join with my PLT join, pull loop through. 
So that's what I'll be demonstrating um, in the next video. So if you don't join, your first motif is not gonna be joining anything. So your very first motif, you're gonna work complete. So that's what I'm gonna show you now. But normally when you're making the blanket, only your first motif is gonna be join is gonna be worked um, this way because there's no joining on it. So for all your next motifs, obviously you're gonna be joining them onto the blanket. So you'll be joining on this round. But this is if you're just making your first motif. Or if you're gonna whip stitch all your mo motifs together or join them in a different way, then you can join. Then you can work your last round this way. So first we've got three single crochet in the first chain space. Again, I don't chain up, so there's my first single crochet. Okay, we've got three single crochet, and then you're gonna make singles in all your stitches across to your next corner. Okay, and this is pretty self-explanatory, so just make so just make single crochet in all your stitches across to your next corner. Now I'm at my next corner chain space and I'm gonna make three single crochet. All right, so I'm gonna work in that way all the way around my motif until I get back to the beginning. Okay, now I've got my completed motif and all I have left to do is join my fifth round. So I've got my final single crochet here and I'm just gonna go straight into both loops of my first single and make a slip stitch. All right, and now I'm, for this motif, I'm just gonna pull uh, enough yarn to even a tail. Go ahead and pull that tail through. And now I'm gonna show you how I bury my tails. So here's your um, slip stitch and you don't wanna tighten that because it's gonna go over your single crochet and just look like this V here. So the first thing you wanna do is bring this tail to the back of your work. So you're gonna insert your hook back to front through both loops of the stitch that's just to the left of your joining stitch. Okay, hook your yarn and pull your tail to the back. Now your tail is at the back of the work. Okay, so now you're gonna go through back loops only from back to front through the stitch to the right of your joining stitch. You never go into your actual joining stitch. All right, and then bring that tail to the back again. And now that's what you're gonna do until your tail is buried. Just bring that tail to the back, from back to front, through back loop only. All right, through each subsequent stitch until your tail is all the way buried. Okay, so I'll just work a couple more stitches, but you'll do it all the way till your tail is buried. So you can see your tail gets pretty buried in there. You can see it from the back, there it is. But you're gonna work over, you're gonna encase it when you work through, when you join or when you make your border, um, this is gonna get worked over. So I've never had tails come loose using this method and it's great because you can see I've worked my tail in at the beginning and I'm gonna weave my tail at the end and I won't have any uh, tails to weave when my blanket is done. 